Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. When a ship is at sea, it not only deals with the dangers of rough weather and turbulent waters, but also other unanticipated threats. In today's feature, we will look at some of the challenges faced by the seafarers and the defense and safety systems developed to avail in such situations. One of the most consistent threats to civilian vessels has been maritime piracy. This illegal act of armed robbery or hijacking at sea is by the pirates, looting the vessels or hijacking them for ransom purposes. However, certain areas have been identified as hotspots for modern piracy due to the high traffic of oil tankers and cargo ships along its coasts. Since this event is quite common at seas, various reliable defense systems for ships have been developed and adopted. Water cannons have been used for years to deter pirates from nearing the vessel. The powerful stream of water jet is enough to flood or destabilize their small boat. And even if they're able to near the vessel, the powerful stream of water makes it challenging for them to board the vessel. The effectiveness of water cannons and the anti-piracy role has developed a variety of similar systems with varying capabilities. Besides this, various other defense systems are also deployed during a pirate attack. A few ships are installed with a long-range acoustic device on board that generates high-pitched noise to avoid the pirates from getting closer. Ships are also fenced with a barbed or razor wire to protect the vessel from being boarded by the pirates. Another widely used tool for piracy safety is the flare gun, which is shot into the sky in order to trigger a distress signal. It's all squid. Apart from the defensive hardware, digital software also plays a vital role in the protection of sea vessels from external threats. International Maritime Security Associates, a maritime security company, developed an automated risk management solution, or ARMS platform, that provides critical maritime intelligence to the vessels. On the contrary, the combat systems used by military vessels are comparatively more sophisticated. These systems are a combination of autonomous sensor technologies along with weaponry to target any aerial or naval threats. An example would be the Aegis Combat System, which is currently installed on 74 U.S. Navy ships, where the Electronic Warfare Suite gathers and interprets electronic signals produced by ships and aircraft and other weapon systems. Some naval ships are equipped with the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System that uses its search radar to detect, track, and engage incoming targets, annihilating them before reaching the vessel. The U.S. Navy has always been in search of an even more advanced defense system. As the 
cardboard comes out. In 2014, the U.S. Navy installed a laser weapon system on USS Ponce and conducted a field test against low-end asymmetric threats. Another long-tested project was the electromagnetic railgun, which would use magnetic fields instead of gunpowder to fire high-speed rounds in ranges of up to 100 nautical miles. But the hype of this project was gradually replaced with hypersonic missiles that would travel much faster than the speed of sound. While surface vessels have adopted various defense mechanisms, underwater submarine vessels have adopted several ingenious ways to protect themselves. Though they are not susceptible to pirate attacks, the submariners are faced with many dangers, ranging from gas leakage, explosions, collisions, and so many elements that can go wrong. Its stealth feature is a double-edged sword, enabling them to be undetected by enemies, but also making them difficult to be located should they require assistance. So how do they prevent an accident from turning into a major catastrophe? A submarine consists of numerous watertight hatches that act as doors for the vessel. For the safety of the crew, the locking wheel of the hatch door cannot be operated when the vessel is in a submerged condition. However, the escape trunk is the hatch through which the submariners can exit a submarine in an emergency. Hatch is open! But for this, the pressure inside the chamber must be equal to the sea pressure outside the hatch. Hence, the crew wears the safety equipment, enters the chamber through the lower hatch, and shuts it. The seawater valve is then opened to flood the chamber, and once completely flooded, the crew climbs up through the escape tube one after another and pushes the hatch open to exit the submarine. Safeguarding the vessel and its crew from unpredictable dangers amidst sea has been one of the most crucial tasks of mariners. Nonetheless, the technology of the 21st century and the great marine minds are making significant progress towards the development of ingenious and practical defense systems. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.